40 50 seconds. It's power. one Number hell of a sight from here. We see it arcing right over top of us. We see 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on Super Heavy as it starts to ascend skyward. Coming up on maximum aerodynamic pressure, then only about a minute and a half until we get into hot staging. Wow, Dan, that was incredible. <laughs> we could feel the building shaking here, feel the, the vehicle's power. Ship ignition, stage separation. Incredible flip by Super Heavy Booster, and you can see those six engines, those three engines on the ship ignited. Six healthy Raptors <laughs> running on ship on its way to space. Peak that engine view. Booster doing the boost back. <laughs> Great call out there that everything looking nominal aboard the super heavy vehicle, which is returning to Earth. And we're going to be doing some experiments with it, including a higher angle of attack re-entry, uh, as well as some engine tests as it gets closer to the Gulf. We are, again, because of these tests not recovering it, we are sending it to the Gulf on purpose to do those tests. But again, you see the booster on the left-hand side of your screen. You just absolutely gorgeous views watching these two vehicles do their respective things in the skies over Texas here today. And Dan, we're approaching the five minute mark into the flight. Super Heavy is descending rapidly. Uh, what can we expect here in the next few minutes as it does no, its atmospheric directly. tests? Yeah, now as we had talked about, Super Heavy might not have a very smooth ride down. We're gonna be putting <laughs> it through this higher angle of attack. So we're kind of pitching it up a tiny bit, increasing drag. So here comes Super Heavy. It should be igniting for its landing burn in just about 40 seconds from now. And we are going to relight 13 engines, then bring that down to three engines. As, as, as we talked about earlier, we will be intentionally Booster shutting down. We will be shutting down one of those three center engines intentionally to push the limits of the super heavy booster. Super Raptor chamber pressure is nominal. And continuing to see six healthy engines on the ship, three sea level and three vacuum engines still ignited as the super heavy booster is making its way back down to earth. We can see those grid fins doing some heavy work. Booster landing start up. Ignited for our landing burn. It may have ended with that landing burn. does look like we lost telemetry from the booster once we started into that landing burn. Did you see a confirmation that the booster did demise? So the booster's flight ending before it was able to get through landing burn, but again, we are not bringing that back. We we're expecting it to make a hard splash down in the Gulf. We were getting live data back the entire time through that high angle of attack flight, so I think we just heard the booster, uh, but all right, we got about a minute left into this burn. All eyes definitely on ship as we get through the final stages into its ascent. We're expecting it to start to cut those engines off in about 45 seconds. All right, just about 30 seconds to go. We're in terminal guidance. In the final stages of this ascent burn. We did see shutdown of the Raptor engines. We do stagger these, so we do the Raptors first. Those three have shut down successfully. Sea level's still running. Ship engine cut off. Ship engine cut off the three most beautiful words in the English language. And great call out that we had nominal insertion. Per usual, I need to collect myself. Uh, 
Hey, Chris, how's <laughs> it doing? going over there in Hawthorne, man? How's everybody doing? I think the elation and the excitement and the happiness at what uh, we just saw achieved uh, carried through across all of our sites. Uh, what? An incredible view to see Starship back orbiting the Earth uh, just under 11 minutes into our mission. Absolutely exciting to see all of this and super pumped, especially to see all of the team's hard work in action here today. As guaranteed, it has been an exciting evening so far for Starship's ninth test flight. In minutes, 26 seconds, we'll have the first deployment of simulated Starlink satellites planned from Starship. That will be followed at about T plus 37 minutes and 49 seconds by the relight of a single Raptor sea level engine in space. This is gonna help us gather data on our ability to do a deorbit burn for future Starship missions that will go orbital. And now today's re-entry is going to test that heat shield like we said, uh, specifically how Starship will hold up to 100 missing heat shield tiles on its thermal protection system. Now, we purposely took those 100 tiles off over very critical areas of the vehicle to be able to safely test on a flight like this suborbital trajectory into the Indian Ocean what might happen on an operational flight in those areas if we were to lose the primary heat shield tile over Starship. So very critical test coming up. And then after that, we'll have the final descent where we will again be pushing Starship to its limits. We definitely pushed the booster to its limits today to gather data, and we're going to be doing the exact same thing on that ship. Eight Starlink simulators, similar in size to our next generation Starlink satellites. The Starlink simulators will be on the same suborbital trajectory as Starship, meaning they will passively re-enter the atmosphere just like Starship. With tests like these, we can see how Starship's payload deploy systems work in flight while ensuring that this simulator satellites pose no safety risk to people on Earth or for other others. Potentially a couple of views. You saw one camera pop up. Yep, there we go. Look look inside of the <laughs> payload bay of Starship. You can see them stacked down in the middle of your view. There's kind of four on either side, so they're sandwiched on top of each other, a stack of four right behind each other. And then we're going to pop the door open. It's on the right side of your screen, so we'll see that open up and then start firing those Starlink simulators out into space. Start dispensing those... Starlink yeah, similar. That's a what a view great right view. at the bottom of the stack. <laughs> so should be should be able to see them kind of firing out from right there. So really cool. And eventually these these are going to carry dozens of the next generation of Starlink satellite into space, and those are going to enable some truly insane things in terms of speeds from space uh, and what we're able to what we're able to do. It now we are expecting the payload door to op open. Any moment now, so we're watching out for that. Again, you're looking at the inside of Starship as it's suborbital. Well, we heard the door open was in progress. It was unable to actuate all the way open, so they are going to close it back up. Hal told me no. He said, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan. Can't do that. Looks like we won't get the door open today. But that's okay. This, this is, is obviously test. a test we want to be able to do before we're deploying full-on Starlinks. But the real focus for this, now that we are in space, is getting to that re-entry. That is the most critical phase of Starship that we still have to prove out. Hopefully continue to keep live views. It's going to still be dark um, until we get a little bit closer to entry as we are a little bit. Uh, we're coming up on Africa. I believe we do swing just to the south of that continent. Um, and by the time we start heading out over the Indian Ocean, we'll start heading into a sunrise. So trajectory as before. 
Uh, we were not able to get that payload door open and deploy those nose cones. We've been dealing with some leaks on the ship. This is also what led to that loss of attitude control. So uh, at this point, we are kind of in a spin and we are also gonna be skipping that Raptor relight. Uh, if you've followed through the history of Starship, this something similar happened, um, different cause, but same symptom uh, back on flight three where we weren't able to maintain attitude control in orbit. The light shows start <laughs> as Starship is getting closer to its re-entry. If you're just tuning in, we were able to successfully make it to orbit, run into a couple of issues as we've coasted to our entry point over the Indian Ocean. At this point, we had lost attitude control of the ship and entered into a spin. The team made the call to do what's called passivate the vehicles, so we're essentially venting all of the remaining propellant overboard. Some video back soon. There we go. So this is a view essentially on the top part of Starship. You're looking up at the payload bay and towards the nose cone. So uh, in essentially a tumble, we had lost that attitude control. Um, so Starlink, when it's able to connect, able to feed this down. Uh, we are at the phase where we would expect entry to start uh, within the next minute or so. So we are entering uncontrolled, but again, we're entering into an airspace and a sea space that is cleared and monitored in advance of launch and before we get the build up uh, during re-entry, we do expect the vehicle to see about 1400 degrees Celsius. And there you can see the, the flap uh, feeling that temperature there, a uh, little bit melting away. Uh, 